A rush in the nth hour is a common practice right now. But those who plan very well don't have to rush in the last hour. And it adds to perfection also. So plan your life as a whole and achieve success. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis is a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with, the main points in a nutshell. New Egypt government to be sworn in. Syria conflict, Aleppo conflict sees escalation. Chinese badminton coach apologizes after players kicked out. Five insurgents killed in Kabul gun battle. India allows Pakistan investment. Mutilated Pakistani woman rebuilds her life. Another news in detail. New Egypt government to be sworn in. Egypt's new cabinet is due to be officially announced and sworn in by President Mohamed Morsi, who took office last month. Media reports suggest Prime Minister designate Hisham Kwantil's government will be mostly of technocrats, with at least two ministers from the previous government and a few Islamists. Former military ruler Mohammad Hussein Tantawi is said to be defense minister. Mr. Quantil has said competence will be the sole criterion for appointment. Speaking last week, he said he wanted all political forces and the people of Egypt to support us in this difficult mission, highlighting economic and social challenges. President Mohamed Mursi has been criticized for the time he has taken to name a prime minister and form of government since taking office in June. His nomination of Mr. Quantil, the outgoing water resource minister, surprised many observers who had been expecting a well-known figure. On Wednesday, state media reported that the prime minister-designate had told Foreign Minister Mohamed Kamal Amr and Finance Minister Muntaz Al Said that they would keep their posts. Major General Ahmad Jamal Al Din, the current Assistant Interior Minister for Security, was meanwhile asked to be Interior Minister. It added, Given the circumstances that have been taking place in the country, the coming period will need us all, the government and the people, to work together to maintain stability, the General told reporters in Cairo. Official also said Field Marshal Mohammed Hussein Tantawi, the head of the ruling Supreme Council of Armed Forces, SCAF, would be Defense Minister, in line with the interim constitutional declaration issued after June presidential election runoff. The SCAF assumed presidential powers after Hosni Mubarak was forced to step down as president in February 2011. Its declaration and decision to dissolve parliament only days before caused outrage and overshadowed the nominal transfer of power to President Mursi on 30th June. Of the 18 ministers named so far by state media, two are members of the Muslim Brotherhood's Freedom and Justice Party, FJP, which Mr. Mursi used to lead. Mustafa Muzad, who was responsible for educational policies during the president's election campaign, will become education minister, while Tariq Wafiq, head of the FJP's housing committee, will be housing minister. Another key post, the Minister of Religious Endowments, Afkwaf, when Osama Al Abid, the president of Al Azhar University. There had been speculation that all ultra conservative Salafist Cleric Mohammad Yusri Ibrahim would be appointed. Syria conflict, Aleppo, conflict sees escalation. The UN says fighting in Syria's embattled city of Aleppo has increased significantly in the past few days. Susan Goshesh, the UN mission in Syria, told the reporters that opposition forces were now in possession of heavy weapons, including captured tanks. 
She urged both sides to show restraint and to distinguish between civilians and fighters in the conflict. Meanwhile, reports suggest army troops have killed 35 people near Damascus, most of them unarmed civilians. They died after government forces shell and overran the neighborhoods Jairus Artus, southwest of capital. On Wednesday, activists and residents told Reuters. On Wednesday, video footage emerged apparently showing the public shooting of four Assad loyalists by rebels in Aleppo, sparking criticism from human rights groups. Restrained, more than two lakh people have been flooded Aleppo in recent weeks, the UN says, as government forces battled house Free Syria Army FSA rebels from country's biggest city. The rebels appear to control large parts of the city despite government assertions that they have suffered heavy losses. The UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported 135 deaths on Wednesday, while the local coordination committee gave a figure of 170. In the last 72 hours, we saw a significant increase in the level of violence. Our observers are reporting heavy exchange of fire, Mr. Gosher said on Wednesday. They also reported the use of helicopters, tanks, heavy machine guns and artillery. Yesterday, for the first time, we saw firing from fighter aircrafts. She confirmed reports that the FSA was in possession of heavy weapons, including tanks, in the city. The reporters in neighboring Lebanon says there are reports that the FSA may have been given shoulder-fired anti-aircraft missiles, which could reduce the threat posed by government helicopter gunships. Our dream is for a democratic Syria, where everyone is equal. That's why I defected from the army. I want a Syria for all, not just for Assad's family. We took up arms to defend our families and homes and to stop the oppression. Chinese badminton coach apologizes after players kicked out. China's Olympic badminton head coach had apologized for his role after his two top players were disqualified for not playing to win. Li Yongbo said, it's me to blame, while disqualified player Yu Gang declared she was quitting the sport. In London, a man was arrested after a cyclist was killed in a collision near the Olympic Park involving a media bus. The man held on suspicion of causing death by dangerous driving was bailed pending further investigation. Russian President Vladimir Putin is to make his first trip to Britain for seven years when he arrives on an unofficial visit to attend Olympic judo bouts. GB's Michael Jaminson took the silver in the men's 200-meter breaststroke. The GB men's football team beat Uruguay 1-0 at the Millennium Stadium to reach the quarterfinals. Yu Yang and partner Wang Xiaoli were among eight players disqualified for trying to lose games in an attempt to secure a better draw for knockout stage. Lee said as head coach, I owe the supporters of Chinese badminton and the Chinese TV audiences an apology, according to official Chinese news agency Xinhua. After the outcome of the disciplinary hearing on Wednesday, you wrote on the Weibo microblogging site. This is my last time competing. Goodbye, Badminton World Federation. Goodbye, beloved Badminton. Apart from Yu and Wang, South Korean Badminton players, Yung Kyung Eun and Kim Ha Na and Ha Yang Eun and Kim Mi Young, along with Gracia Paloli and Melinda Johari of Indonesia were disqualified for women's doubles competition. Meanwhile, transport in London appears to be running without major incidents, although a rehearsal early on Thursday morning for Olympic even meant temporary road closures around Hyde Park in Knightsbridge for a few hours. Five insurgents killed in Kabul gun battle. Afghan officials say five insurgents believed to have been planning attacks in central Kabul have been killed in a gun battle. Security personnel raided a house in the east of the city 
and fighting broke out in the early hours on Thursday. The battle continued for six hours. Dozens of homes were evacuated and vehicles containing explosives were also found at the scene. The raid involved Afghan forces acting on a tip-off, officials said. Security officials had earlier told reporters that eight insurgents had been killed. Officials say three vehicles packed with explosives have been seized from insurgents along with suicide vests and other weapons, reporters in Kabul says. Three insurgents with remote controls and directions for sophisticated attacks in different parts of the city were arrested. Last night, Kabul Police Chief General Mohammad Ayub Selangi told reporters. This was a really big plan. Thank God we were able to stop it. Intelligence Agency spokesman Latifullah Marshall told the Associated Press. The Taliban has denied that the fighters were involved in the battle. Parliament, we was really in a bad situation in the Parliament House, in the Parliament building, in our places. But in the meantime, it's not only the case of us. You can see just meters away there's a school and there's a civilian which is, was living there. But I am proud about my great brothers and their response and our security forces back to the enemy of the country. Of course, it takes very long, which is we were worried about it. But at the beginning, we succeed and we got back our dignity.